when it comes to formulating, one of my sort of pet hates yeah. is being critiqued for underdosing. Good example, uridine is studied at about 300 milligrams, I think, and it goes up to like 1.2 grams. It hasn't been studied at 50 milligrams, but that's the jo- that's the dosage that we've decided to put in there because yeah. we found that 50 milligrams of uridine gives us the stimulation. Yeah. And then you get people that look at the formula and they're like, this guy's underdosing, he's undercutting, he's, he's being yeah. lazy with his formula, yeah. he's trying to cut corners. Yeah. No, I'm not. Thank you for addressing that. We need to stop this arms race of dosages in supplements. Mm -hmm. This concept that more is better. I've Mm -hmm. seen it time and time again. It's like, you want to bring out a pre-workout with 250 milligrams? I'm going to bring out one with 300 milligrams. (laughs) You want to bring out a a supplement with, I don't know, uh, 20 milligrams of uh, 1% Hupazine, eh? I'm going to bring out 100 milligrams and overdose people at some point. So you believe minimum effective dosage? For- I'm, I'm big on minimum effective, especially for receptor density. If you've got a, enough muscle mass, if we're talking muscle builders, you might be able to handle bigger doses. But if you don't, it's really detrimental. You flood mm. the receptors, you get the knock-on effects, the downstream effects that are undesirable, like excess conversion to things like estradiol, estrogen. It's a miss. And it's the same with nootropics, right?